Welcome back to my studio. I'm going to be working on the roof of our old outbuilding out there. And this, we didn't really have much reference on what this roof would be, but we both, Bill and I, kind of decided that it probably was like cedar shake shingles. So I start them in the background, and I'm using some of my mixtures from the boards on the wall, of the, or from the walls of the, the building. But I'm using, I'm making the mixtures I'm, toward the back of the roof cooler or bluer. This way it makes, gives the appearance that that roof is going back. Then the ones that come forward to the more of the front edge of the roof will be warmer or have like more orange in them which gives them visually the appearance of coming forward. Artists work on a two-dimensional canvas and we want it to appear th in three dimensions. Warm and cool colors is one of the ways that we can use to make this two-dimensional painting appear three-dimensional. So I just, these sheeters shingles, oh, it's hard to say, the cedar shingles are rough, so I can just kind of put my paint up here. And kind of rough strokes. The roof is uneven. And you can see how these, I'm a little bit too warm up here, but I'll come back and, and change that. But you can see the difference between this warmer, oranger color and the bluer color in the back, and how that blue goes back. It'll be much more apparent when I'm finished with the, the roof, but this gives you an idea. I want to get the entire surface covered and then I can come back in and add more texture whatever into this. This side of the roof is going to be not real bright because it's the sun is coming in from the right so this side of the roof is a little bit in shadow. A little bit of lighter mixture here. Just add some more white into that. These are mixes of my mud which is two parts of ultramarine blue plus one part of alizarin crimson. And then I've added for this warmer part, I've added cadmium orange into that, and then a little bit of ultramarine blue because I don't want it real, real warm or real bright orange. It's kind of a mossy green. In this part of the country, the roofs tend to get some little moss growing on it. Then back here, my mixture is my mud plus ultramarine blue plus a little bit of the orange, but not much. It has more blue in it than the orange, which makes it cooler. And this makes it, this makes these shingles go back. Warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. with a smaller brush I'm coming back in and adding a little more texture onto that roof. I use bright brushes and what that means is that is a brush with a square end. And now flats also have a square end but they're much longer bristles. I prefer the brights because they have the shorter bristles. But with that square you can either make a, a big stroke or you can turn it with the at the corner of the brush and make a fine stroke. I really like these. I just I started out using filberts which has kind of an oval tip. But one time I tried the I think we missed what we got some of these by mistake. We ordered them and I just just fell in love with the brushes. So happy accident. One of those God things just 
you can see I'm starting to get the feeling of texture, the rough texture on that roof. Mixing a little bit more blue into my warm color. I want it to be warm but not just real, real orangey warm. As you can see even that's a little bit has more orange, it's warmer than the that's bluer back there. Now as we come closer, well first of all let me do this on the edge of the roof. The light catches these shingles. So this this edge of the roof will be a little bit lighter. Now I'm coming in with a little bit of my mud plus liquid and I'm just adding some texture in this, this roof. And again, I can hold my brush, that square tip brush sideways and make, make longer strokes. You'll have more, show a little bit more of this uh, crevices between the shingles up here as it goes back you don't see as much. That's another trick to help give the feeling of depth in a painting is you make objects closer to you more detailed, those further away less detailed. So on this roof on the front edge we want more detail but as the shingles go back then we want less detail so that they, the eye then takes that back. Going to make a little bit lighter right in here. And now this side of the roof, the right side is going to be lighter. Those shapes are going to be lighter because the sun's hitting them more directly. So on this side, they're going to be a little bit warmer and a little bit lighter. stand out against those trees in the background, that light. I don't want it real bright because I want this, again, I want this roof to fall back. This building is in the distance so we don't want it just really super, super detailed. Now the boards on the front, I'm going to use the same, the uh, fascia board. This is the same colors that I used for the building below. And this brush is just the perfect width to make my fascia board. A little bit dark up at the top, but I can just make that lighter. Come back in here, and this is in shadow, so this these boards again are going to be from the building are going to be darker. It's all in shadow. And as you get deeper up into the shadow, it gets a little bit darker. Now 
Now I'm going to take a smaller brush and pull this because this up right up here underneath my cedar shingles is going to be a little in shadow. So this lower edge is going to be bright. That's going to be lighter and then it'll be darker up under there. I'll do the dark in just a second. Takes a few times to get this just Just right now with my shadow color, I come under here and this these cast a shadow along that edge. Now I'm going to take, now this is my mixture of my mud plus a little bit of a li liquid in it. Liquid is a, um, it thins it and it also speeds up the drying. It's a medium. But you're going to have a darker line than right at the under edge of those shingles. Where they meet up with that fascia board. So I'll do the same thing on this other side to finish out the, the uh, roof on this old, old building back here. I appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel. I also have a blog where I show the step-by-step -step process of the entire painting. Please feel free to visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my YouTube video along with the address of my official website. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you again so much for visiting the studio.